Okay, hi everyone. So we're looking at the second part of our intro to the PIC32. Again, these notes uh, were originally written by Lucio DiGiazio. I've updated them a little bit for the latest version of uh, MPLAB X. Not really a big deal. They're mostly his, his work. All right, so we're going to go through what happens when you write a main loop, uh, a while loop in uh, C or C++. Um, and uh, we won't really go over logic expressions. Uh, we'll do that in a future one, but we'll go over the timer and uh, and what the simulator looks like with the logic analyzer. All right, oh, and then I'll show you a little video of the actual board working um, afterwards. Okay, so again, there's also really, really good resources for MPLAB X and the PIC32. Uh, we've talked about them in previous videos. All right, so, it's important to point out that um, the, the the main function that you write up actually gets placed somewhere in memory. Where does it get located in memory? Well, it gets located at this particular location right here. At power up, uh, unlike the at mega, uh, there's a little bit more complexity. There's a lot more stuff going on behind the scenes. And so there's a special um, runtime program that's inserted called CRT0. This is a very common thing in um, uh, more advanced processors than, than the Atmega 328 or bigger processors than the Atmega 328. Um, if you need to take a look at it, you can take a look at CRT0.S. Notice a capital S means a, uh, uh, an assembler statement or an assembler file. Um, and, uh, and, and basically, you don't ever work directly in this, nor do you work with this right here. Most of the work that you're doing is in main, but it's important to know that there are things that are written uh, by well, the manufacturer that, that has provided the, these additional sort of um, infrastructure for your board to work with. And so when you're starting with a brand new chip, uh, you may have to come up with that on your own. All right, so when you write uh, programs, Typically, in an embedded system, it's repeating over and over and over again. And that's often done using while loops. And that while loop has, in the parentheses right here, a logic statement. And that logic statement, uh, if you want to make an infinite loop, um, will be just the number one. However, you can make that while exit on a particular condition. And so you could have, say, for instance, um, uh, time is greater than not x, let's give it actually a number, 1000 or something. You could put that inside of the parentheses and then in here where your solution would go there would be something about time maybe or time value uh, incrementing like this. Okay, you, you give it some value that increments uh, every time it goes through the, the, the loop. These logical expressions uh, which apply to both conditional uh, uh, if kind of structures as well as while loops um, have true and false outputs. Typically true is one and false it has a value of zero. There are logical operators that you can use to combine different conditions together, different uh, things that you're evaluating. There's the, uh, the logical or, there's and, so you can see those right there. You've got the not operator. You've got the is it equal to, which is a double equal sign, not equal to like that. Um, you've got greater than or equal to, etc. You want to be careful about uh, the sort of loops that you create. If you were to uh, create a loop where the condition inside right here is zero, it just plainly won't execute because this effectively means false. And so what this can be interpreted as is while things are false, oh wait, hold on. No, we're not gonna do anything in here. On the other hand, while things are true, just keep going over and over and over again because this never turns to false. If ever it did turn to false, then you would simply exit and not repeat the loop, okay? So when the condition inside of the parentheses is false, whatever's in the loop doesn't get executed, when the condition inside of the parentheses is true or one, then it gets executed. All right, so here's here's an example 
of something that we might want to do. Um, so you've got your include here for the chip support. You've got your int uh, main void. So this is your main function. You initialize things using your tri-state uh, register for port G. And what it means is that the bottom 16 bits represented by the two, sorry, the bottom eight bits, I apologize, uh, bits zero through seven are going to be zero, which means they are all eight of them will be, uh, so port G1, port G2, port G3, etc. will all be output pins. So on the chip itself, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Each of these can output voltages, either zero or 3.3 volts. Uh, then you have an application while loop. Um, and so what we do in embedded systems is we have one of these strange loops where it is always true. The condition for the while loop is always true because the idea is that this will go on forever. In a truly embedded system that you embed in a wall or you put somewhere in the ground or, or put somewhere in a mountain, you just want it to keep going over and over and over again. And so what's going on here is that you're saying every time you go through, step one, turn on output a positive voltage, 3.3 volts, on all eight pins. Step two, turn them off. Then you go back. Oh, it's true. Turn them on all again. Then turn them off. Whoops, that should be a zero right there. Zero and then semicolon like that. Sorry, there's a typo right there. Once you're done with that, you loop again. Is it true? Yes, it is true. Then go back down here. Oh, turn on all eight pins. Make them all 3.3 volts. Then go to step two. Oh, turn them off. Then go back and over and over and over and over and over again. All right. You can do things that are a little bit more interesting by engaging a timer that will um, not just turn things on and off one after the other immediately. What it will do is delay, put a delay between the time it comes on and the time it turns off again. So you can have a flashing light, for instance, going on and off, on and off at a desired rate. The timer is defined by a number of subcomponents. So for instance, uh, let me see where we start here. You've got, uh, you've got a peripheral clock that comes in right here. That's uh, a signal that comes in. It's an on, off, on, off, on, off, very regular tick, 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 or tick, tock, tick, tock, tick, tock, tick, tock, where this would be a tick, that would be a talk. Tick, talk, tick, so tick, talk, tick, talk, tick, sorry, tick, talk, tick, talk, tick, talk, tick, talk, tick, talk, like that. And, uh, and this feeds into the rest of the timer. So it feeds in, then you've got a prescaler. This prescaler, for instance, what it will do is it will say for every eight TikToks, then send out your own signal. And that feeds in through up here. Eventually, you get it coming through into the timer system, the timer register, and it compares against a particular value that's coming in from, uh, say, a prescale register or a pre counter. Um, so you've got a number of components that are going on and off, on and off, on and off, that at the end of the day, what they're doing is allowing you to create delays in your microcontroller, microprocessor, in basically a semi-autonomous kind of way. So timer one is a 16-bit timer. It, uh, it works similar to other PIC microcontroller timers, like the, the PIC-16, which is an 8-bit microprocessor and the PIC24s and the DS PICs, which are 16-bit processors, um, which is kind of weird. I know 16 and 8 and 24 and 16, don't worry about it. It's just a thing. Um, they operate off an internal peripheral clock that has uh, uh, a connection to the system clock, or you can have an external input signal. Um, and, uh, and yeah, basically the 16-bit register allows you to count up to a particular value um, that gets as big as what 16 bits will permit you to count up to, which is 2 to the power of 16 minus 1. 
All right, what it would look like is something like this, where you have a hard-coded number called delay and a dynamic number uh, that comes out of the register for timer one. Basically, it's a number that keeps going up and up and up and up until it hits maximum value and resets. And, uh, and so this is a dynamic number. And as that goes up to a particular value, uh, this remains true, that it remains below a delay. And then as soon as it exceeds the delay, then this goes to false and then the while loop exits. The uh, delay value, um, or sorry, the timer value is modified by uh, a number of different signals and, and um, uh, dividers, basically, within your timing system. Here is a pair of examples. Uh, they're effectively the same example. The first one is in C, and the second one over here is in C++. Not much of a difference between them. You can see that you've got your main over here, you've got your main over here. Um, the calls to the uh, registers are the same. The while loop looks the same. The exit, uh, well actually I should have made this right here. Uh, int main void as well. And then down here there should have been a return zero. This delay value is not dependent on whether it's C or C++. Uh, they're just two different versions of the same program where the delay for lighting the LED was different. And so I encourage you to try this out. If you've got your own board, you can actually try it out. Um, change the delay value here and you'll see the light frequency will change. You can also simulate it. And uh, so if you want to try out the simulator, there's a logic analyzer, depending on the, the version of the IDE that you've got. It's either called Analyzer or Logic Analyzer. You go into Windows Simulator, Logic Analyzer, or Project Proper, and then after that you go into Project Properties, Simulator, and Trace, which is what I did right here. And you can modify the buffer for it, so the amount of space that it, it, it takes to capture the waveforms, uh, the on and off, on and off signals. You can choose which signal you want to look at. In our case, I was looking at uh, port G uh, bit 2 to see if it was going on and off, on and off, by uh, putting breakpoints in here. You can add other channels if you want. So channels are, are other signals. Um, and so you just, you go into the, there's a, um, a symbol, a pair of hand, well, I think it's a hammer and a wrench. You click on that and you can choose different pins, virtual pins that you want to um, analyze. Okay, and that was a whirlwind look at the main loop written either in C or C++, which has internal while loops that accesses timer one in order to have a delayed on and off response inside of the PIC32. It's very similar to the timer that's used on the Atmega um, 328s or the PIC16s or any of the other uh, processors that you might have already used. Mm -hmm.